Hello there and welcome to this course on regression analysis with Python. My name is Valentine and I'll be your instructor for this course. This course will follow the following structure. We'll get started learning more about the learning outcomes, um, what objectives we'll be working towards um, in this particular course. Um, after that, we'll get to learn more about um, regression analysis, um, its concepts, as well as why we need to learn more about those concepts, as well as also when should we use um, regression analysis generally. Um, after that, we'll go into another section where we will um, go through a reading. So we will provide you with a curated reading that will cover the concepts that we will have discussed so far. And in this reading, we will go through some um, 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 quiz as well. So we'll go through the following reading that you see on your quiz, on, on your screen. And the idea is that you will get a good um, and fair understanding of the concepts that will come into play. And after that, you will get to go through a quiz that we will provide after to just help you um, fully grasp those concepts that um, we'll have covered. So that will actually mark the end of the first um, section in particular when it comes to um, this workshop. So the idea is that by that time, once you have finished the quiz, the idea is that you will be in a good position to um, theoretically talk about those regression concepts. And um, right after re the reading and the quiz, we will go into a practice session that will entail you putting into practice those concepts that you will have learned so far um, in the um, first section. So the, theory, th the theoretical aspects now um, will now, um, you get the opportunity to now practice them using now, um, um, put them into practice now using the Python programming language. Um, and this will do um, through the use of a already curated notebook. So we have a notebook that has all those concepts that we will work towards in this course. So um, I'll be taking you through the examples and you will work on the challenges that will come by. And um, after you work on the challenges for each section, I'll, I'll be giving you time to just um, work on, um, yes, work on the challenges, but at the same time also verify um, whether you are able to have achieved um, what was expected in those examples or in those challenges. Um, so there will be some um, solution notebook which will have um, a walkthrough of the actual solutions which you will check by yourself. So once we've completed the practice work, the next thing um, would be to put into practice those concepts. And what we have done is to curate a project. Um, so we already have a project that um, will help you put into practice the regression concepts. Um, and this is a project that's the real life project that you can use to showcase to um, 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 potential employers um, and even talk about um, um, that um, in your interviews. So the idea is that um, you will be able to put into practice those skills that you will have learned and be able to um, solve for a real world um, problem. Um, and um, we've, um, in order to work on this project, we've provided a guiding notebook that contains um, already some, some code that will allow you to generally focus on um, entirely on application of those concepts. So um, there are quite a number of concepts um, that we we'll have covered. So um, you will get the opportunity to also um, put them into practice um, and in assistance with a guiding notebook. And once you have done that, you could also check the solution, um, whether you were able to have achieved what was expected by simply um, um, going through the sample solution notebook that we will have provided. So generally, that is um, the structure that we are going to be using for this um, particular workshop. I hope that you're ready and and um, can't wait to get started. And, um, um, you know, all the best in your learning journey. Let's get started. Uh, okay. So starting off, um, the first thing that we would need to understand are the learning outcomes. So by the end of today's learning experience, the idea is that you should be able to recall the concepts of simple linear um, regression, multiple linear regression, KNN or K nearest neighbors, um, decision trees and support vector machine regression um, in 
the context of regression analysis these are different algorithms that we normally use when it comes to working with machine learning models more specifically um, for our use case we're going to be working with them for regression tasks you should also be able to describe when to use different types of regression models um, when making predict predictions you should be able to perform linear multiple linear um, knn decision trees and support vector machine modeling to make predictions using the python programming language and lastly you should be able to recall the limitations of different um, regression models so generally the idea is that by the end of today you should be in a good position to um, work on any sort of machine learning um, problem that um, pertains to regression um, analysis so starting off um, what is regression analysis and this is a type of statistical technique that we can use in data analysis or data science to examine the relationship between the dependent variable um, and um, the independent variables sometimes in a data set yes we could have multiple columns now working with a tabular data set we assuming that we have multiple columns in the context of data science or data analysis we normally refer to those columns as variables but now um, if you even go further um, and and you want to to build to use the data set that you have in order to make predictions you would normally build what is called a model a machine learning model um, in our situation we're going to be creating um, machine learning models so what we are going to be doing is um, in the context of having that data set um, in that data set we have different variables but there will be one particular variable that we would want to predict so for instance assuming that we had a customer's data set and we had a column called return we might want to use the customer's data set which has multiple variables and there's also an, a variable of interests um, uh, that we want to predict which would be um, return to determine whether a customer will return or not so we might want to um, ensure that um, we use the rest of the independent variables to predict um, 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 and, and value for um, the customer uh, for the return column so assuming that yes we use this data set um, we might you know by conventionally we might decide to maybe have a data set with 50 records and then we can study that data set so that whenever we have a new customer we only we look at the data um, in relation to the other variables which we normally tend to call as independent variables and then we try to understand based on the other historical records um, whether that customer is likely to return or not and if 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 and that would be useful for many use cases sometimes we might decide to do that because we might want to ensure that our customer base continues to grow and we want to have repeat customers so we might even start giving them offers specific offers if it's just um, a product or service that we are um, 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 we can be able to target we can we can provide to this these customers that we have so generally in a data set as such as the one that i have mentioned um, you would have what are called independent variables and one dependent variable now the name independent variable um, when it comes to data analysis or machine learning problems or data science problems the independent variables you can call them you can give them a different name you can call them features um, you can even call them these independent variables you can call them predictor variables they're different names but generally the idea is to understand that you have these independent variables that you use to um, train a model to um, um, a machine learning model um, that will make a prediction so in the case where we want to automate that process of 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 making some predictions rather than us looking at the data and trying to determine whether a customer will return or not we can create a system we can create a computer program that we train um like the training like we teach um th that we train um that um com that model based off that data we use that data to train the model so that it makes a prediction on whether a customer will return or not so that's the basic idea over here and the primary purpose of um, performing regression analysis is normally just to understand and quantify how 
the changes of the independent variables that you have are associated with the changes in the dependent variable. Now, now um, I've talked about uh, making predictions. So you can work on different kinds of problems. You might have um, a prediction that you want to make, maybe in that case, whether a customer will, will return or not, whether a customer will churn or not. But now, um, that was just a generic example. It may not be really suitable for regression analysis. What might be suitable for regression analysis would be if the variable of interest, which is the target variable, um, in our case, it was return. If that particular variable is a continuous variable, it, if it has numerical um, values, if it has multiple values. So if it could be that um, that variable, instead of just having just... Um, um, the variable that we have right now, the return has yes or no as the as the um, value that you, that we are interested in. But assuming that we wanted to um, to to predict possibly maybe whether it's going uh, not even whether uh, we wanted to predict the um, 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 temperature tomorrow, we wanted to predict um, um, maybe if we had a student data set, we wanted to predict the grades now in terms of values um, of, of if a student, um, it could be even just SAT scores, um, it could be um, something else, or assuming that we also wanted to predict maybe um, the price of a house. So these are different types of variables, but they are numerical in nature. When we are working with a target variable that um, we want to predict that is um, numerical in nature as such, um, um, it has it has uh, continuous values, continuous values, just just values which are many and they just range. Um, and and in such a situation, and that's for ease of understanding. In such a situation, we tend to say that we are working on a regression analysis problem. So in a in a regression analysis, in regression analysis, we tend to predict a continuous variable. Now, that is our, our variable of interest. When it comes to now um, another type of analysis which is um, related to regression analysis, it's called classification analysis. Um, the same is usually almost the same, but the only difference is that the target variable usually is categorical in nature. Like, for example, the variable return, it has categories in terms of values. There's um yes or no like the customer will return yes or no so in that categorical variable uh, variable you have yes and no as the values and in such a situation we are working towards classifying whether some new record will actually have a value of yes or no so um generally um to understand um and and you can still continue um maybe maybe another categorical uh, variable in uh, in such a situation might be whether it's going to rain or not, whether the student will pass or not, whether the customer will churn or not. And there could be categories. There could be even up to five or even up to 100, um, depending on the, the problem that you're working with. But normally, you usually have, um, in many cases, just um, less number of categories. So in reg regression analysis, we have many, um, we have a continuous variable. And in that continuous variable, yes, you have different values that you're trying to predict. So the idea here is, um, in regression analysis, you have a data set, you're trying to train a machine learning model. You're actually training, you're not trying. You're training a machine learning model to predict um, that continuous variable. So um, before I even continue, there's something else that we also need to understand. And that is, um, um, say, for instance, if we wanted to, 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 to train a model, just the entire process of training a machine learning model and to just define what a machine learning model, it's a computer program that you create um, to and you train to be able to make predictions. Now, how do we create a machine learning model? We create them from what are called algorithms. The algorithms that we have mentioned in the learning outcomes um, um, such as KNN, multiple um, or linear regression, decision tree, support vector, um, machine. Um, those are actually algorithms um, that we can use to create these computer programs. So you have algorithms which um, usually work differently and you can think of them as just um, complex. They're, they're just instructions which work differently. Um, and then you have computer programs which you're training them, um, which which you actually 
um, 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 uh, which actually are based from the algorithm. So you could um, algorithm. So you could have, let's say, a decision tree machine learning model, which is based off a decision tree algorithm, a support vector machine learning model, which is based off a support vector machine um, algorithm. So generally, um, you have an algorithm um, as well as an, on this other side, you have a, a machine learning model. That is something just important to understand. So you normally um, create a machine learning model from um, an algorithm and now um, once you have created it you train that model to make predictions and when it comes to making predictions um, um, not even making prediction when it comes to training um, we normally have a data set and we tend to split a data set into two or three um, different parts depending on what you're trying to achieve but in most cases you could uh, split a, a data set into two different um, 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 sets. So you have, um, say, 80% of the data set, the original data set would be um, what is called a trained data set. That's the one that you use to train the machine learning model. And then the 20%, that's the remaining um, from the 80%, the 20% data set is the one that you use to, to evaluate the performance of your model, of your machine learning model. In some other cases, we might also want to tune, like to tweak, to tweak what are called parameters or to tweak um, 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 or to tune our machine learning models. And we might decide initially to just split the data set into three. So a trained data set, a test data set, and a validation data set that we can use to tune the model. So models, machine learning models tend to have what are called parameters can think of them as just um, radio buttons that you can be able to tune and figure out which set of hyperparameters they call hyperparameters not just parameters um, work best um, for this machine learning model in order for it to actually um, um, make um, predictions so generally that is something that you need to know so you have a trained data set a test data set you train your machine learning model using the trained data set and the trained data set usually has independent variables and the dependent variables um, variable which is one and it's called a target um, it can also be um, called a dependent variable in some cases it can also be called a label so once you have that um, you could also um, so that's the trained data set you use to train a model a machine learning model with and once you have um, trained that your machine learning model in order to check its um, 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 how it performs its performance we usually use a test data set and this is usually the most trickiest part um, so but just to be clear I'll just explain so in a train in the test data set you also have independent and the dependent variables so you have independent variables and the tests and the dependent variable which is the label or target but now during the test phase you usually put the values of the um label or the target variable or the dependent variable so you usually put those values aside and then you um ask you you ingest the train uh, you ingest the independent variables of um, the test data set to the model the model makes its own predictions for the um, dependent variable and then you compare the two um, um, the original test um, the original test dependent variable values and now the ones that have been um, 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 the ones that have been predicted by the machine learning model and you check um, how far they range from each other Sometimes a machine learning model that, that performs really well usually has um, 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 the difference is usually quite less. It's not that much. So um, just just to go back to regression analysis, I think I've talked a bit about that. So there's usually a dependent variable. This is the variable that you want to predict and or explain. Um, sometimes you call it a response variable, an outcome variable, a pre, um, a um, a label, a target. Um, so for example, if you are studying the factors that affect person's salary, um, salary would be the dependent variable because you want to predict um, the um, salary variable um, and you might have cust uh, the other other um, the independent variables. It could be um, um, age of a, an employee or uh, the age of the age of the employee. You could have the um, height, you could have the 
um, 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 other information about it. There could be in a lot of, it could also be um, level of education. It could also be um, how long they've worked with the company, etc. Independent variables, we've already mentioned what they are. These are variables that you believe have an influence on the dependent variable. Um, regression model, I've talked about it. It's just a um, mathematical equation. Um, sometimes you could think of it as that. That represents the relationship between the dependent and the um, independent variable. This is in, in computer programming, just now create now a program, a program or in data science or data analysis. This is when we create a regression model, you can think of it as just a, a program that you create that will make now those predictions. Um, and yeah, so they are coefficients. So in a regression model, when you drill down to a regression model, because this is a regression model can be represented using a mathematical equation, you um, can have coefficients within, um, you do have coefficients within the mathematical equation. And sometimes, and we normally refer to those um, coefficients as um, parameters or weights. Um, and, and, and we normally would um, as have each and every of those coefficients for each and every independent um, variable. There are residuals, which is just the difference between the actual values and, and uh, of the dependent variable and the predicted values or from the regression model. Just going back to the test data set where we took the independent variables and tried and, 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 as, and, and we used that to ask the model to make a prediction and it gave us its own prediction. So the difference between its own predictions and the original um, um, values that were there for the dependent variable for the test data set is what um, would be referred to as the residuals. Um, and um, generally, that is usually um, the com those are usually the common concepts to understand about regression analysis. Now, um, when it comes to different types of models uh, that you can create, so um, you can create a simple linear regression model, which um, would allow you to study the relationship between one and two different types of variables and um, a regression line, you could draw a regression line um, which can show a positive linear relationship or a negative linear relationship or even just no relationship at all. Um, for example, for use case, if you wanted to perform simple linear regression and use that model, we could um, use good use case would be re where we want to understand the relationship between sales and advertising costs, but at the same time, we also want to make, say, advertising costs um, 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 predictions generally um, be, um, based off some certain sales. The only limitation is that this particular um, model is usually prone to outliers. And also, in, you know, when it what comes to working with real-life data sets, we normally would be working with lots of independent variables, not just one. But this is just for ease of understanding what um, really happens. Um, there's multiple linear regression. In our, in, our, in our case now, we would have multiple variables and independent variables. And in such a situation, we would be um, using, uh, we would be having such a trained data set that we would want to, um, again, make a prediction for the label data for the label um, variable um, and 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 this particular type of um, machine learning model would have many assumptions there are quite a number of assumptions one of the assumptions is that each and every independent variable um, would need to be correlated to the um, target variable so now the data that is the data that you're working with in the trained data set you need to ensure that you study it so that you understand whether there is a positive correlation or there's a correlation not generally post but there needs to be a linear relationship between the independent variables and the target variable in the trained data set not only that um you need to ensure that the independent variables are um, normally distributed so you can use histograms to just to determine um whether those particular um, 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 um variables independent variables have a normal distribution if not you can use some techniques to um, make sure that they are or you can just leave them out from the entire data set and the decision to do that usually depends sometimes you can even just test out um, um, what would be the effect of removing some of the um, um, variables that you're working with and you would check the uh, effect of that on the accuracy or the metric that you're using for your um, um, for assessing the performance of your model 
multicollinearity basically refers to if um uh, you need to ensure that the independent variables don't are not correlated so each and every independent variable would need to be um um, um, um would need to ensure that it's 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 um it's it's not correlated at all so you can build a pair plot you can create a pair plot using C seaborn and that will give you multiple scatter plots that you can use to um, um assess that no outliers you'd also need to ensure that there are no outliers so you'd probably use a box plot multiple box plot for that um, values of residuals are independent you'd also need to assess that and quite a number of other assumptions that's the reason why we would also need to perform um, statistical data analysis um, techniques um, in particular univariate and bivariate um, techniques in order to check for those assumptions um, in order to improve your model in most cases um, when you're working with a linear regression model you would need to have more data um, um, you'd also need to ensure that the assumptions are right um, so you'd also need to check all the other assumptions and sometimes um, you need to drop the the, the poor features um, so that is something that 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 um, um, you'd need to check so that is one type of of model or uh, that you can create um, from a um, linear regression algorithm um, well that is one type of the many models that you can create so the other one would be k nearest neighbors um, and how this works and how this works is that um, yes you create a machine learning model from the knn algorithm and and how it would work is that you for whatever new points that are that you're trying to predict the machine learning model will assess um will try to get some sort of um, um, um average um in terms of the distance um from the already existing um, data points that you have so so for example um, it might end up trying to give um, a certain value for the target variable based on how close the set of independent variables is close to the already existing variables within the um, 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 tag the train data set that you had trained it on so k nearest neighbor it's an instance based algorithm which just compares new problem instances with instances seen in training um, and it would try as much as it can to um, make some sort of um, average of the already existing um, values for um, or predictor values or label values for the training data set so it checks okay there's this new record that you're trying to predict maybe for a new customer um how close is this new record to the already existing um, records in your data set mm, okay it's close enough maybe to two or three of these records so it checks for two of the records there are three records depending on because you usually specify how many records that you wanted to compare with so it checks the closest three then um, it checks their labels um, for those the for the ones that were in training data and then it does some average and then it assigns now that new average to now that new um new 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 um record that you want to 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 predict so generally while performing regression we would this type of regression using knn we would have to choose um a parameter k so um we choose that k which would just represent the number of um, records we want to use when it comes to making um, predictions um, as one thing to note is that as we decrease the value of k to one our predictions become less stable but if we um, increase the value of k um, the values tend to become um, um, more so you tend to use more of the existing records to check how close now the um, new record is, is 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 to the existing ones um, decision trees um, decision trees um, is is another type of um, uh, algorithm that we can use to create our machine learning model a machine learning model and um, we when we use decision trees we normally would what use what are called decision trees um, again these are just more like trees um, if you if you uh, I think more like logical trees um, I, I should have given an illustration here but just for ease of understanding we usually use 
uh, a tree-like structure to split the data multiple times according to maybe some so according to some cutoff values um and um and and that and, and the approach normally used for that process would um involve using um some algorithms which um, um might be what have has been defined there cut i id3 etc there are quite a number um and the reason why we would use decision trees over those other ones is because decision trees um are quite robust when it comes to um handling large data sets um they are also robust to when it comes to working with data sets with without liars um so you do not really have to prepare your data that much um as opposed to say when you are working with linear regression you have to check for all those um assumptions um one by one um, yes, linear regression actually is usually quite interpretable as opposed to decision trees. But um, when it comes to decision trees, you have to do a whole lot. Um, and you know, when it comes to linear regression, you have to do a whole lot. Um, so when you have a data set where, let's say, multicollinearity, all the independent variables, they sort of, some of them have um, relationships amongst them. Um, that is why we, we call it actually nonlinear. Um, when you have a relationship between um, independent variables within a trained data set, then it's usually um, 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 nonlinear. When you don't, then it's usually linear. Um, when you when you have um, a linear and complex relationship between features and even the labels themselves, um, then in such a situation, decision trees usually work really well. Um, the only prob problem that um, you might face is that sometimes decision trees can learn so much from the training data set such that um, they may not be really good at um, predicting values which are not um, um, much more similar to the already, the already existing data set. So that's why we say that they usually have a high probability of overfitting. And a solution to this would sometimes be to use... Um, to perform to use to use a validation data set um, um to be able to to ensure that we are um getting um better results or to even just to use what are um called just multiple decision trees and do some sort of average for that so it's normally using using maybe some other um complex um algorithm such as random forest which is just an advanced um algorithm of decision trees that would help us be able to achieve the same um support um vector um regression we can use this type of algorithm um, um whenever we have say for example um a big data set that has multiple values and uh, multiple variables um independent variables even even 100 um uh, normally this type of algorithm is uh, uh, the machine learning models based on this type of algorithm they usually um they're able to handle such data with ease so normally um that's that type of data set that has may much more um variables um um uh, as opposed to the records is usually referred to as a data set with high dimensionality so if you have a data set with 100 um records and 100 variables and another one with 100 um records and another one with 500 variables the one that has 500 variables independent variables uh, we would say that that um data set um has high dimensionality like there's a whole lot of dimensions but this particular also algorithm we normally um use it to avoid difficulties using um linear functions in the high dimension of feature space which i've talked about um and the um, um the actual um uh the actual models they usually rely on what are called kernel functions to construct the model there are quite a number of kernel functions and we might sometimes want to also experiment when we are um tuning sometimes we might want to tune to figure out which which particular um kernel function works best for um the use case that we have Again, this this particular data, this particular type of al uh, uh, model um, that is based on um, linear regression, uh, that is based on um, support vector regression or support vector machines, um, is 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 usually um, robust to outliers. And 
but the only disadvantage is that um sometimes it can be um um sometimes sometimes it may it may not it, it sometimes it can be a bit more difficult to explain um because um some it uses uses vectors and um all the points that um so all the records that it learns from a training data set it usually puts them in what are called hyperplanes um so it brings a lot of complexity when it comes to explanations um and also choosing an appropriate kind of function is really difficult um and also complex sometimes you have to tweak um you have to tune you have to select multiple um um kind of functions for for that and you also need to perform what is called feature scaling so it you would also need to ensure that um certain variables um all the variables within the um training independent variables that you're working with within the feature space are within a certain range so you need to perform some conversion that ensures that all the variables values have maybe are between zero and one um and that is something that you get to learn later in another course called feature engineering um with python all right so once we have built all these these regression models with our machine learning models what do we do the next thing is to evaluate their performance you might decide to create um these are usually by the way all these ones that we've gone through are normally called um base models these are the types of machine learning models we might want to start um with whenever we have a problem that um is at hand and um from the onset when we realize that these none of these machine learning models are able to achieve our learning uh, our metric of success maybe we want a machine learning model that makes errors to a certain degree um and when we realize that it makes uh, each of these models actually make error like you know they actually are not performing really well um so what we would do is to um possibly um opt to perform hyperparameter tuning which is tuning the hyperparameters or by default by the way if we realize that all the, all of them um are not working the way they were without even specifying any sort of parameters with the default parameters you might want to now tune the parameters or even perform what is called feature engineering which just involves playing around with the data ensuring that it's in the right format for each and every um for for the actual the consumption of the machine learning models but generally you would normally let's say create five of them like each from different types um for different each of the different models and then you assess which one works best for whatever data that you're working with or you might even work uh, you might decide the one that um, performs better based on the evaluation metrics that we are going to go through in a few um you're going to now proceed and perform um either feature engineering which will be even tweaking the data that you have maybe creating new data deleting new data that may not have impact may not impact the performance of your machine learning model so you can decide to do that so you pick one and the one that performs best and continue refining it or you could even decide to use what are called ensemble models um which generally um involves combination of um the you decide to combine multiple of these uh, machine learning models that we see here now when it comes to evaluation yes you have been able to train a model to make a prediction and you want it to you want to make it you want it to make a prediction we normally use um, what are called evaluation metrics and there are many of them but the most important one that we which, which is widely used is called the root mean square error and um generally it's it's just <laughs> it's just the square root of the average squared um difference between the target value and the predicted um value by the model so let me just take you back just to explain this back to where we used our model to predict the um label values for the independent variables for the test data set so the outcome of that um operation was that we had a test data set um a test um label from the pre from the model and also we had the original um label so the idea here um is to use just different approaches to um determine a certain to come up with just a metric that we can use in order to say that this model performed well or not so root mean square would be we would take the difference between the values of the original test um labels and um 
the new predicted labels by the predictor by the machine learning model we'll take the difference for each one of them um and then um once we take um we actually would um we would add the error and then take no not, not add the error it would be um we would take the difference so we take the difference um then we add the difference and then we get to the square root of that difference um which is what is actually defined here so um it would be predicted minus um actual so um predicted for each and every for each and every um error that we have so it would be the difference between the actual error um that was the actual value that was there and the predicted value so the predicted we get the um sum of those errors then we um square that and then we um square root um um that divided by n so generally this would be um what is referred to as the root mean square error and how we normally um interpret this is that um, a root mean square error usually runs from zero to um, um, zero upwards. It could be 10,000, 20,000. But zero, values closer to zero would indicate that the machine learning model actually performed really well. So if you have two machine learning models and one has a root mean square of 20 and another one of 100, the one that's, uh, that has a root mean square of 20 actually performed um, really, um, really well. Um, if you have one machine learning model, um, in case of regression, then sometimes we take um, the average of 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 the um, target variables, or the av not even target variable, the average of the original data set. So we get the label. Um, not even how do we do it? We get the average of the original label. Um, so which will come which i'll be able to take you through and then we get the 10 percent of that average and we compare whether that 10 percent is actually the um it's actually um if if we get the root mean square at the very end whether it's greater than 10 percent or less than 10 percent normally an acceptable value is usually less than 10 percent um, um for a model that performs really well but I, i'll get to walk you through that so um when this this particular type of metric we would normally use it um, um normally because it usually um works well in most 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 cases there are other types of metrics which um, will come in handy later but just learning more about root mean square error um works best we can even just have a course on just um regression metrics um, um with that regard we'll even just give a few examples in the practice work why is regression analysis important? I think we've already talked about this um, when we want to um, predict future outcomes based on historical data, um, when we want to understand the relationship between variables, when we also want to assess maybe risks and, and vulnerabilities um, by analyzing how various factors affect um, some sort of outcomes. So for example, a financial institution can use regression to assess the impact of interest rates um, changes on, lead, on loan default rates. Um, and also when we also want to optimize processes and um, resources. So um, that is also something else. So you could even actually pause the video and go through that, some of these examples that we have here. When to apply regression analysis, I think we've already talked about a whole lot of examples, relationship assessment, when we want to understand how one um, variable uh, or two variables or multiple variables um, relate to an independent variable, when we want to make predictions or forecasts, um, make forecasts, when we want to even just establish causal relationship between variables, um, pattern recognition in certain cases, and also in customer behavior analysis. All right, so at this particular point, I understand we have talked so much. I'm going to give you about 10 to 15 minutes. I've written 10 minutes, but try as much as you can to finish with the amount of time possible, least amount of time possible. Go through the reading and quiz. Um, which we have already provided um, and and once you go through this reading um, takes about five pages long um, work on the quiz that we have given you here and the reading and the quiz should give you a good understanding of the concepts that we have covered so far once you have some fair good understanding fairly good understanding of those concepts then you should be ready to undertake the practice work 
which will um use python um to do to to apply those concepts in so um you can continue and um come back after um 10 or 15 minutes all right so the next thing that we're going to be going through once you have finished working on the quiz um is the practice work so we will put into practice what we have covered so far by the way i forgot to mention the reading that um will be provided if you're looking towards um i'm getting more out of the course itself um you could become an after work member um it just helps with just ensuring that um we're able to continue producing more content so um to have access to every reading um, or every material for this particular course you can simply become an after work member or you could um there's some platforms where this course will be posted um you should be able to access the resources um um easily um considering that already though you'll be on a membership platform um so be, to be able to access all the resources um do note that so the next thing that we're going to be going through is the practice notebook which um you will see it's just a document that will contain the concepts um and challenges um pertaining to the concepts that we will go through i'll be taking you through the examples um step by step application of each and every concept and also I'll give you just a bonus section that you can also go through by yourself at the very end so i'll take you through the examples let you continue working on the challenges so after each and every step i'll pause and then you can you know even you can even pause the video and um work on the solution um and then check your solution with the solution notebook that um we have also provided so starting off um this is a notebook so the first thing that you need to do is to go to file then save a copy and drive this should open another copy of this notebook um in a new tab and you can close this one this is just a master master copy and you can make changes to that other one and save them and you should be in a good position to just come back whenever you feel like you need to come back but it is that you're going to continue in your learning journey um in this particular step so let's let's first of all let's continue um let's continue working towards this let's go to to um let's save a copy so file save a copy and you should do that so once you have been able to save a copy and drive the next thing that you need to do is to connect this notebook to google servers this notebook is hosted in google drive and you can access it access it using google colab which is a program that will just allow you to uh, work with notebooks in the cloud on google drive um and in order to be able to connect um to run code we need to connect this notebook to just google servers which are provided for us for free so you should be able to do that once you've done that um we'll now go through the different sections of the notebook we have what are called cells and each cell has just um this content their text cells and code cells so let's just expand the simply simple linear regression cell and we should see that we have some prerequisites um which would just generally contain um libraries that we can import for performing various tasks so there are libraries for data manipulation performing mathematical functions and also for creating um visualizations um just to give you a good idea libraries it's just a chunk of code that has been written for performing specific tasks so in our case we'll be working with these libraries and we'll also import some other libraries in between um especially one that's called a scale learn that will give us access to um the algorithm the machine learning algorithms that we need for this case so let's start with simple linear regression so let's uh, run um import this um you won't find this prompt um in your case if you have created created a copy if you've gone to file saved a copy um but if you have just ensure that you do that for me um i don't want to save any changes so i just say run away run anyway so when that has happened so the next thing that i'm going to do is go through the first example um we will need to create a linear regression model to predict the output y given x i mean put x from the data set below so this is our data set url the first thing that we need to do is load our data then check our data like explore it clean it perform eda or exploratory data analysis um implement um the, our model like you know create our model 
chain it and then evaluate it so that's what we need and but we want to do that for simple linear regression so let's load our data so we'll do this um, using pandas pd we are referencing pandas here um read csv and then we pass this particular url inside the read csv function and then um the output sorry the output of 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 here will be stored in this particular variable and when we store that um result we usually refer to now this df variable is a data frame so we'll be saying that it's df data frame just the data frame is just a tabular structure so to explore the data we can um, check the size of the data set using the shape property um, shape um, just click on that these are the number of records and this is the number of columns so we have two variables and 700 records we can preview the first five records using the um, head function so we apply that to our data frame df and we should be able to see the first five records x and y these are the records also we can um, display statistical summary of the data set um, even helps us to check the um, missing values and we can see that we have a missing value here because for the count of values for x we have 700 for y we have 6699 so which means there's one missing value this is the mean um, standard deviation uh, minimum point so it's from zero to that um, minimum minus um, three to this um, and some other quantile um, information um, in our use case some other statistical information um, we clean our data we have a missing value so um, and 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 we can even just even confirm those missing values and you can see that we have a missing value here and we usually use this null dot sum and you can learn this in our data wrangling course um, how to clean data um, the same case with dropping values this is how we drop um, missing um, we drop records with missing values so drop na um, and we um, apply that change by simply again replacing the output um, of, of this right hand side to df so that is it and then we can check our missing values and we can see um, here we don't have any missing value here we had an indication that so once we have cleaned that data we might want to perform exploratory data analysis um, or even just what we had mentioned as statistical data analysis um, and more specifically we might want to determine whether there's a positive or a relationship or any relationship at all between x and y so we use the plot um, function from pandas and then we um, set the x-axis to have the x variable and y-axis to have the y variable and style as um, zero um, as a zero it's it's o um, to just um, be part of the markers that we want in our chart so this is what we have in terms of the dots so um, from here we can deduce um definitely that this is statistical there's a relationship between the two variables we have x and y so the values of x and y um increase um as the values of one variable say x increase y increases as well so it means there's a variable there's there's a um there's there's some sort of um statistical there's a there's a positive there's a linear relationship between the dependent and independent variable so when building a linear regression whether it's simple or multiple linear regression so in that use in that case um we would need to check for all the assumptions and here we just checked for um one assumption which makes sense in our case because when you have one independent variable and the one that we wanted to check was a linear relationship whether there's a linear relationship between the independent and dependent variable which there is and then and by the way if there couldn't have been this then it would have meant that we would need to use a different type of algorithm to create our machine learning model because um, linear regression um, wouldn't be um, suitable so to prepare our data set for training we first of all need to we need to um, first of all select the x x column we need to select the x column and store it in a particular variable the same case in a y column the same case with the y column which is actually what we do here so we use the iloc method to select all values and we want to select um, the first value um, the first column um, in our data set which is the df data frame and we select the values by just specifying values we've provided some more explanation if you really want to understand what is happening 
so you can do that the same case we do that for um y so to select y you also just specify one um inside the square brackets as um as shown so we run that to be able to sell to store now those particular values for x and y so x data set has the independent y has the target once we have done that we need to split our data set into um test and train data sets and to be able to do that we need a function that we can do that manually but um there's a neater way which just involves importing this particular function which um oh we can call it a, a method um but just a function which which uh, we import from this particular um module so a model selection on the scale end so we are able to um, use now this test split function um, to be able to split that now here we define four variables x train x test y train and y test um, and what we want to do the outcome on this other side will actually come in four folds so there will be um, the x train which is the independent variables for the train data set we will store here the x train that's the x test the independent um the in the in the in the test data set we have the x um, we have the label um values which we store here for y um now the y train which will be now the um the 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 label for the in for the train data set we will store it here and the label for um the test data set we will store here so the independent variables um for the um test variables will be stored here so here inside the test split function we have x we define x x would be what we had here which are um which is the x x the independent variables um y um we specify y to be the dependent variable which is the target um we also test we, we set test size to equal to 0 0.2 which will indicate that 20 percent of the data set here um excuse me we will have 20 percent of that um, data set be a test size um you could play around with 0 0.25 0 0.3 um later um once you have created your base model but for now we just select 0 0.2 then random state um you be normally use this parameter we set it because we would want to have reproducible results if you don't set this parameter and if you share this with someone else or even if you run this example every now and then you always get different results so um by setting random state to zero you ensure what is called reproducibility so run that as well and then now here comes how um, the steps of how, how we can be able to um, work with a machine learning model so we first of all would need to import um, what is called um so we import the algorithm itself which is a linear regression algorithm um from sklearn and then we create an object when it comes to um python um we normally work with what is called what are called objects and classes so here we've imported a class called linear regression which is the algorithm but we decide to create um a copy of the class which is now creating an object an object is usually just a copy of the of the class it's um the class is usually just a template so here we have a linear regression class and this is an object so we create an object or an instance of of linear regression um so here we have a model that we create and we store it in regressor the variable and then we can be able to use um what are called methods from the linear regression algorithm um, but now um, we pass um, the x train which is the independent variables of the x um, of the of the train data set and the y um, that's the label of the again train data set we want to train now the regressor now the machine learning model um, using now this data set and we use the fit method for that um, so let's do that let's train it which which it has which it has um once we have done that we can now our machine learning model is well and good we can now use that machine learning model the regressor one which is now trained to make some predictions so we are going to use it to predict the um 
um, its own values for the um, label for the text test data set which is here um, and stored now those that outcome in y prediction or y pred and once we do that in order to compare the predicted values by the regressor with now the original values of x test we can just have a table so we have the y predicted values on one side which we'll call actual and no um, yes the, the the y side the y predicted which we'll call predicted and the um, y test um, which we'll call actual and we use pd.dataframe to create a table a data, data frame and that data frame we would store it in df um, and, and preview that as well so you will see um, our machine learning model based off of this table um, predicted that um, for the values um, of this record the first record in um, the test data set um, the, the respective value should be 28.9 while actually it was 29.6 um, the same case on this other side so you can see some errors it wasn't perfect this machine learning model wasn't perfect but again it wasn't far off um so that's this is some good use case on how you can do but now we're going to evaluate our performance by now using a metric we'll use the root mean square error which will actually calculate based off these values um and we are going to import um the metrics um, um we're going to import the the uh, mean square error um, 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 function from the metrics um, um, module um, and this is how we do it and then calculate using numpy np square root of um, metrics dot mean square error the outcome of the mean square error mean square error inside the function we put y test and y prediction y pred which is just um, what we have here y pred y test and y pred um, which are the values here and this is going to calculate what you see here will calculate the mean square error but we find the square root of that because we want to work with the root mean square error which is that and if we run this we will get um, that our result is 2.74 now we had mentioned that when it comes to working with um, something like root mean square error you and you're working with one just machine learning model in order to know whether that machine learning model um, was okay we would need to compare this with the 10 percent of the mean of y um, which was right above there so the mean of y if you go up here to the data set um, this is what we were trying to to predict y but now if we get the mean of this the mean of this is is where is it 49.9 um, but 10 percent of 49.9 would be around um 10 percent of that would be 4.4.9 yes 4.9 so we would expect our root mean square error to be below um to be less than 4.9 to be able to say that it's okay so yeah so this is for, for not 49 4.9 so generally generally um we can say that um this this actually this this model was fairly accurate and we can use it to make predictions now there are different other metrics that we can use for example we can use what is called the coefficient of determination which is called r squared metric and um this just metric just tells us how the regression model fits the observed data so for example if we calculate the metric um this new metric r we're using um the, that's the r squared metric um if we calculate it we might get um 0.099 which generally tells us um, that the machine learning model actually um, performed really, really, really well. 99% um, really, really well, um, which, um, which could be okay. But again, you also want to, um, to um, 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 you also want to ensure that you, you, um, you also try different metrics to just be sure that what you have is actually um, a, a really good model. But generally, that's it. That's usually the process of, of, of creating a machine learning model, and then you train it, then you use, you use a predict um, function to be able to predict it, and then you evaluate its performance using a square metric and then um, any other metric that you want. And that basically would be it. That's how you 
create a machine learning model. There's also a whole process that is that involves creating or even maintaining machine learning models over time, which we don't cover in this workshop, but that will be something that you could cover in a future workshop. So for now, let's let's pause there and and see what's 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 um next. Work on challenge one A as well as challenge one B um and verify your solutions. Try as much as you can to um go through that entire process that we've taken you can even copy paste some of you can copy paste the code that we have and then we should be good to go the next thing that we're going to do is multiple linear regression all right moving on to multiple linear regression um the approach that we're going to be using it's actually most similar to what we have had so we're going to load our data check our data clean our data perform um exploratory data analysis then implement um, and evaluate our machine learning model. So let's see how that happens. So our question would be create a machine, um, a multiple linear regression model to predict the weight of fish given the following data set. So that's where we have, we load the data set um, and then we just check it. We can just preview it. You can even use other methods, example, but the idea is just to just see, um, just have a good idea of the entire data set. So what we are trying to predict is weight of the given fish so weight this is what we are trying to predict um we check for any missing values 159 we don't have any missing values um which this is a, just a way but you could also get, use another way but um weight um will also come in handy the mean will be this 10 percent would be 39.8 so um that could also come in handy that information when it comes to just evaluating how a model performed um we can clean our data if we want. Um, we can even just, for example, we are creating a multiple linear regression model. So we might want to check for assumptions. So one of the things that we could do is to check for um, positive relationships or negative relationships, but we can use a person correlation coefficient to determine the relationships between um, different variables like weight and length is 0 0.91. Um, so a value between, so a person relation a person correlation coefficient um the values usually range from minus one to one positive one um the center you have zero so values closer to the each and every end would imply that those variables are actually um the variables in question are actually um, um have a positive correlation so for all these variables we can see they actually are closer to positive one um the same case here we have values which are um positive quite positive to greater than one but if you want really to learn more about how to interpret this you can have a look at our statistical data analysis course um covered um, much in that so um the idea here we can see that actually almost all the variables they are greater than 0 0.5 which is you know it just implies that we the data set is good enough for use or with with a linear regression model so um so we also we can also um, plot a visualization um, to just visualize this um, clearly, which you know we have here. Um, this is actually just give us a good idea. Um, Negative six, but we can also define what we want v max or v min there. Okay, so we again store x um, the independent variables in the x um, variable and the dependent variable in y like we did earlier. Then we split our data set into um, X train, Y, X train, X test, Y train, and Y test. Once we do that, we also set the random state to zero. Test size is 20%, 0 0.2. We import our linear regression um, algorithm and we create an object and also we train the model itself. And then we make predictions. And then we um, display the predictions, just a sample of them. So we use the sample um, function for that. And we pass 10 inside because we want to display 10 records. Um, there's a sample of 10 records. You can see this actually performed really bad. I mean, 300 was the actual and it predicted 503. Oh, uh, it didn't perform really well. Quite huge errors there. So root mean square should be quite higher than the previous one that we found. You can see root mean square is 161. 
Um, and 10%, you remember 10% was um, 10%. Let's go back here. Um, this is the weight that we're trying, 3.98. So 10% of this would be 39.8. And this is way above 39.8. 161 so it means just we just need to you know we can decide to look for more data we can check for other assumptions um like in the idea of of you know like in our situation by the way yes there's a problem because when we are interpreting this um these variables have their they they have they do not take care into account of the multicollinearity um assumption so like length one and weight you know this is they shouldn't have um strong positive they shouldn't be they shouldn't um be highly correlated they shouldn't have such a um, relationship so we need to think about another alternative so yeah um it's so poor features so yeah or even just consider using a different machine learning model so yeah so that's it just work on challenge one and challenge two b and once you're done, um, check your solutions, um, and then we can continue to KNN. and n All right, moving on to K nearest neighbor, K and n um, The approach will also just be the same. So we'll start off loading our data. Um, again, um, in this particular step, we won't go through um, step two, three, and four. Um, that will be something that you can do by yourself in actual projects. Our focus for this workshop is just regression analysis. So starting off, this is our question. Use the KNN algorithm to create a regression model to predict the weight of the of fish um, given the following data set, which is good. We are going to compare even the root mean square error for KNN, um, for KNN model. So let's load our data again, um, do the same thing. Um, but this data set is now cleaner, um, so don't worry about it. Um, we won't do that. We'll just go straight to um, our creation um, bit. So we prepare a model. We set the um, data that we need. Um, we did not use the iLock method that we did there, but you could still use it, but it's only that we just wanted to use a different way, selecting our data, store that in X, same in Y, so run that. Um, we split our data set. I've already explained what we do with that. Um, perform feature scaling now we might want to ensure that we perform what is called we prepare our data set further by ensuring that all the data that we have here is in this uh, here is in the same scale like you have weight which has big values and width has small values so what we want to ensure to do is that to ensure that weight and width are in the same scale between zero and one um, or between we can use just different um, what what is it called just different ways of scaling your values ensuring that the the range or the magnitude of values do not affect the outcome of your model they do not affect how your model performs so we import um, the standard scalar class to be able to perform that and we actually apply that on the x train and the y test um, data set we could have actually even done it um, way above before even splitting our data set, but it's okay. We do that here. Um, and we have now in this particular X train, if we were to display it, um, we should be able to see that our values are quite smaller than what we had initially. So I've just created a new code cell and deleted it because we don't need it. It was just for previewing that. So once we have done that, um, we can now import the k nearest neighbor um, 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 algorithm. So we also, um, but now when it comes to k nearest neighbor, you have to define your your value of k, which is usually what you define here. You can say k equals to five. Um, but in our situation, when we are creating a multiple linear regression model here, like a linear regression model, we didn't have anything. So that's usually um, different. Um, for k and n, you have to set that um but when it comes also to hyperparameter tuning when you're tuning those settings there are more settings not just k um, or even even for linear regression that you can also play around with so we define that to be able to say that we want to um, compare five five records whenever we are predicting 
um, our closest neighbors whenever we want to make a prediction. So let's um, create our model and then train it. And then we use it to predict. Um, we check the values um, production predicted. And we can see um, these values are much more. They are actually closer. Some of them are far off. Some of them are closer and some of them are far. It's just random. But we can use a root mean square for that. And you can see 171. Actually, this is actually worse than um than 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 the linear regression one. Um so linear regression gave us 161. This one has given us 171, which is not really good. But sometimes you might find this working better than the other one. Um so work on the challenges and then we'll continue from there. Moving on to decision trees regression. So um we will still just still again work on the same um using the same um data set um create a decision tree regression model using the following data set it's the same data set that we shown so we are going to read our data du -du 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 -du, it's the same one describe it still just the same one du okay then let's go to implementation again you remember you could always apply the techniques here um by yourself further techniques so okay here we have decided to do this this step in here which is okay and import this first which is okay so let's split our data set um, bum, bum, bum. um we use the decision tree regressor and we can also set the random state to zero um for the decision tree regressor normally we would do that um and train our data set make predictions let's um compare the actual and predicted values Oof, this this is not looking good this is good this is good okay let's let's see the root mean square error for that Oof, yeah it's really bad it's not as good as so actually the first one the one that works really well is linear regression followed by k and n and um and now decision trees okay we've gotten there let's um, work on the challenges and how and learn how to implement um the decision tree regressor then once we're done we'll come back all right moving on support vector regression so we will still work on the same data set we'll use the same data set and compare our results so let's load the data set um and then describe it to just have a look at it as well um and then I run this um split we're going to split our data set let's it's just selecting those variables and storing them in the respective variables um here we're changing the test size to 40. okay all right we do that then we perform feature scaling again to just ensure that our data set is okay um, but we didn't do feature scaling in 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 decision trees, remember? So we could potentially do that if we want. Um, but you remember we had mentioned that um, when it comes to working with us, the support vector regression machine uh, was S SVR, um, we need to um, scale that. We need to scale our data. Let's let's work with it, and we define our kernel. Um, that's the kernel that we were mentioning. Um, and then we predict and then let's see whether we are going to see whether let's check whether we're going to 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 get a better outcome for here 233 actually the it has performed worse than all of them so i think what we can do later is we know that linear regression works best but we just need to probably look for more data um um check for those assumptions like multicollinearity um we could also check for and also make decisions about that we could also create more features from the existing features um we could also check for um, normal um, distributions etc so for this particular time let's just work on the challenges and come back later once and also evaluate your solution all right so um now we're back there's an addition section that we've provided that helps us to just learn more about how to go about different important concepts when it comes to 
um i'm working with 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 um when when it comes to working generally with models so you can go through these three sections by yourself they're just like self-explanatory k-fold detecting multicollinearity residual plots etc so feel free to go through that so once you have done that you should be now getting a good position to undertake this particular project that we have um this project should take you about uh, maybe an hour or so um and the idea here you just test out all the different models and see which one works best and also check its assumptions um to see whether it performs best so the idea here is just to predict prices for um new properties um so rather than um just you know uh, so because the idea is just to help some um real estate agency be able to um um, um be able to 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 make some sort of so, sort of sort of um assess uh, well prediction when it comes to prices so just check on that but you, you will be required to use a multiple linear regression though you can check with other other um models later um once you have realized multiple linear regression is okay maybe you might want to further your assumption and test your assumptions maybe other models are okay um or better than this then you can also check on that i think then that's it for now um what we can do is uh, once you have done um i think once you have done with this um by the way use this guiding notebook to just um take you through the entire process um you it will help you to also go about um some sections that you might have not learned maybe like how to drop duplicates etc um once you have done that check um your uh, solution with the solution that we have provided to just see whether you are okay you're generally okay with regards to the project itself so once you have done that you should be good with regards to regression analysis the next thing that you can start working on um, after you finish this is to now go into classification analysis which will now involve almost a similar concept and even using the same um, different but just different algorithms but now for classification purposes so you would be having a um, target variable that um, is categorical in nature as opposed to continuous in nature and and the approach would be much more similar to that but um, 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 that would be um, actually an easier workshop than this one I would say um, for reasons because you already now have some good idea of how to um, create a machine learning model so all the best if you have any questions by the way ask in the chat or comment section or whatever platform that you ask us you're accessing this course in and we'll be happy more than happy to respond um and um all the best in your learning journey see you in the next course of lean classification analysis with python